Oh, YouTube Caboose here with the third and I believe final installment of the Beginner's Guide to Airsoft. In this, we're going to talk about actually purchasing gear and what you should and shouldn't do. Uh, so, just to get started, when you are purchasing gear, make sure first time you purchase the gear in person so you can get a feel of what the gun's like and, uh, or the chest rig or the vest or whatever. Make sure it works with you because the last thing you want to do is order a set of knee pads online as an example and they don't fit. Or they're very poor quality and the only way you can tell is by actually putting your hands on them and looking. Or another example, uh, why you need to look at it in person is because for all I knew when I purchased this thing obviously didn't have this for all I know this thing could have been okay but very uncomfortable to hold but I was lucky and it's actually not too bad so uh, and make sure to try to go to a local store if you go, because if you go to your local store you support them and they are able to do their jobs for longer and once again you can actually hold the product and see whether or not you like it, whether or not it fits, whether or not it's going to fit your style that kind of thing and generally for a new player uh, local stores will give you what people would say the hookup meaning if you get an electric gun sometimes they'll uh, throw in a smart charger. We'll take the original charger and put in the smart charger, which we covered in the last video. So, but uh, anyway, I'm blanking here. So yeah, go in person. Uh, do not buy secondhand unless the guy you're buying from you absolutely trust. Okay? Because people like anywhere else, will try to, for lack of better terms, for you over. Uh, and make sure you're smart about your purchases. Do research on whatever you want. For example, this Elite Force 1911 that I did buy second hand, I would not have bought it second hand if it wasn't built like a tank. Oh yeah, quick note. Any gun you purchase from a store must have a orange tip. If it does not have an orange tip, you should not be allowed to buy it. And you should also always have a case for that. Of some sort. Or just the original box it came in and just keep it in its original box. Uh, anyway, uh, for transport specifically. Uh, anyway. And also, when you go to local stores, they'll help you out more than what a computer would because face to face interaction, they'll tell you hey this is one of the best items that we sell we know this product inside and out so if you have problems we can help you out or if it comes to face and uh, face eye and ear protection they'll let you know hey just so you know this is what we have been told is the most comfortable mask by people that bought it from us or that kind of thing they will help you out in person. And so it just go to local stores first. And if you want to go online, look for cheaper uh, prices on the same product. But once again, I want you to help out your local store because they are the ones that are going to, once again, give you the hookup. And although they might not always have the best prices what you do get will help you out a lot more. Uh, for one thing, warranty. When you buy the warranty, you have 30 days from when you purchase it in your hands. When you buy a product online, you have 30 day warranty. As, uh, just as a pure example, it'll take you anywhere between a week to two weeks for it to ship, so right there goes half of your warranty. So and another advantage about purchasing in person is you can ask questions. You can't ask a computer questions and expand it, uh, ex expect 
to always get a correct answer, let alone an answer of what you were asking about. So, so just go to your local store, they'll give you a hand. If you don't have a local store, um, then just give up a uh, just give up a store well uh, well known store a call and they'll help you generally uh, so or call up a store that is the nearest to you if the nearest store is in for a three hour drive give them a call because they will still help you out and uh, fields that are generally a bit bigger and are fully comfortable with hosting airsoft games, so they'll generally sell stuff there as well, and you can ask those guys. So, just as a word of precaution, really. And, uh, just so you know, uh, you have, just looking at a electric gun standpoint, if you're going to run a high capacity mag, you... If you want to go with Bone Basic, so Smart Charger, Full Face Protection Gun, BBs, that will, assuming the gun comes with a decent battery, uh, shut up! Sorry about that. Um, that'll run you about $150. Because, uh, Hundred dollar electric gun charger is about twenty dollars. Uh, full face mask. If you want to go bone cheap, it's about another twenty, twenty five. And a smart charger can be anywhere between five to ten dollars. Uh, some cases fifteen. Sorry all about all the ruckus. There's a little bit of construction going on. So. If you want to go a little bit more higher end with the gun and the mask, you're more than welcome. It'll run you up to about 200 to $225. Um, and if you want to go full out best gun you can get, best full face mask that you can get, it'll run you up to about $300 to $350. So, uh, I'll leave... Um, I will leave in the description below uh, combinations of gear that you can get. And although uh, the site isn't my local store, it's just to give you an idea of what you can get. And if you can, go to your local store with the name of each item and ask them to order it for you. Just for the sake of helping out your local store. Not mandatory, but just once again, just just to help them out. All right, this is Caboose signing off with what I think is the final beginner's guide to airsoft. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped. I hope this saves you a lot of money because airsoft can be quite expensive if not if the right precautions have been taken. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.